Hello and welcome. This is a video for Photo Focus. In this video, we're going to take a look at an unsung hero of Photoshop, Content Aware Scale. You may be familiar with its sisters, Content Aware Fill and the Content Aware Move Tool. If these are a mystery to you, leave a comment and if enough people are unsure about them, I'll make a video. On that point, I'm always looking for ideas, so help me out by asking questions. Any of the who? Content Aware Scale. Here I've got an image from Adobe Stock called Happy Woman on Beach. And as you can see, it doesn't fit the canvas that I want to work to. In this case, it's a 1920 by 1080 canvas for video. The first thing I'd do is press Control or Command T to enter Free Transform and drag the bottom right hand corner down. So at least it fits in one dimension. I can't go any further or I start to cut off the subject. The problem, as you can see, is that I have a blank space to the right. Now I could clone stamp, content aware fill and a whole host of other techniques, but instead I'm going to try content aware scale. For me here, it's greyed out. The reason for this is that this is an image from my libraries and as such is linked through to a definitive copy in the Creative Cloud. We can also see that this is linked on the layer itself, a little cloud icon there on the thumbnail. What I'll need to do is to make this a local copy. I'll do this by right clicking on the layer and choosing rasterize layer. You may have noticed the cloud icon on the layer's thumbnail disappeared. Now, if I go back to the edit menu and down to content aware scale, we have it available. So I'll choose it. We have the transform handles again, but this time they work a little differently. If I take the handle on the right and move it to the right, you'll notice it behaves in a different way. The scaling isn't uniform. Some parts of the image transform quicker than others. Unless you've changed the default, you'll notice that it transforms in all directions too. Not what we want. I'll press escape on the keyboard and then this time hold down the shift key and do the same. Now that's better. This time the transform has only been in one direction and again is not uniform. And by this, I mean that some pixels were transformed while others were left alone. So it looks like some have been stretched while some have not been touched at all. In particular, the happy lady. What's happening here is that Photoshop has analyzed the image and assumed the subject. Never assume, I know, but it does a pretty good job. So now when I transform it, it knows to leave the main subject until last. At some point, it'll snap and we'll have to transform the subject. But that's when you go as far as you can and then you use other methods. If I were doing this for reals, I would be off drinking tea and watching Downton Abbey like a proper Brit. But now let's explore some of the more features in the contextual menu at the top of the screen. First off, there's the X and Y coordinates of the layer. You can make these absolute as well by clicking the triangle between them. Then it will show the distance the image has been moved or transformed. Next, the W and H, the width and the height of the layer. Unlink this if you want, especially if you don't want that annoying transformation in all directions we had earlier. I'm going to do that now so that it doesn't happen to me ever again. Then there's the amount. This is a threshold. What is the difference between the pixels? Is it solid color, similar color, and is there an edge? Sliding this below 100% is going to give you very different outcomes. And in all honesty, I have only ever changed this during a demonstration. Protect is excellent, especially when you have a subject that's a little less hard to define and Adobe Photoshop doesn't quite find the main subject. I know that in this image, I want to protect the happy woman. So I'm going to grab the select object tool and draw around her. Photoshop does a great job of detecting her in this case. This may not always be the case, of course, and a little more manual work on the selection may need to be done. I don't need to, but I'm going to refine the mask while I'm here. A little bit around the hair, 
with the Refine Edge tool and then Decontaminate Color. Like I say, I don't need to be so precise for this, but I think it's good practice. I may need a better mask later in the project. OK, click on OK. And now I have another layer with a layer mask. Don't worry if you're not familiar with masks. Again, leave a comment or a question and I'll make a video. I'll jump into channels panel here and we can see that we have that mask here. But the title is in italics, meaning it's only on this layer and is only available with this layer. And as such, it's temporary. I want a mask I can use over and over. So I'll click and drag this channel onto the plus sign. Older versions used a post-it type icon, which I really missed, by the way. Now we have the temporary channel and a project-wide one. Back to my layers, and I can now remove the layer with the layer mask. The channel we created is still there, of course. OK, back to content-aware scale, and if I go to the protect, I can now select the channel or mask that I just created. Now, when I scale, that area will most definitely be the last to scale, right up until the last possible pixel. We can see this more clearly if I reduce the width. We can see the happy woman is great until, yep, squished. Interesting to see here that her arm looks as though it's got a ghost, but that's the cloud also being transformed and I'll have to deal with that separately. Finally, there's this bathroom sign. Hovering over it, you'll see that it protects skin tones. Great if you're doing portraits. You may have seen a similar process in the color range in the selection menu, by the way. OK, content aware scale is great for making images to fit different sizes like print and film, but it's also handy for different social media sizes. There we are. A tour of content aware scale. Thanks for watching. Leave feedback, comments, and questions wherever you're watching this. And don't forget to give a like and subscribe if you want to see more. I'm Eric, and I'll see you on Photo Focus next time. Bye bye for now.